Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the 90-Day Professional Copywriter Playbook. My name is Lucas Roszewski, the copywriter millionaires recommend, and I'm about to teach you how to get from your first client to getting two to five high-paying gigs every single month as a professional copywriter. This is a comprehensive training, so I highly recommend that you have something to write with in front of you and you let go of all the distractions that are sitting around your computer right now because... Hopefully, if you pay attention to this entire course and you implement what I'm about to show you, you can have your first client within the next week and you can be getting two to five high paying gigs every single month within the next 90 days and completely transform your lifestyle as a professional copywriter. Without further ado, let's jump right in. So phase one, there are three phases to this program, to the 90 day program. Phase one is how to get your first client or first few clients. First things first, right at the beginning of phase one, you want to inventory your existing skills and talents. So ask yourself, what are you already good at when it comes to professional copywriting? Are you an email copywriter? Are you a sales letter copywriter? Do you work better in some niches, in some industries? Do you have some results with previous clients or perhaps from your past job? You gotta look at what you're already good at. And be honest with yourself. Like If you write really good emails and people respond well to them, that's a skill. Being able to write an email that gets responded to is a skill. If you've written sales letters for clients and they get read, then that is an enormous skill. If you can write a VSL script, that's amazing. What are you already good at? That's the number one thing you wanna write down and you wanna either pause this video or take some time after this video to write down what are you already good at and give yourself credit. The next thing is what can you prove success in? This is different from the first one because in, in proof cases, you look at the results that your work has generated. If you write emails and they get opened at a higher rate than normal, or perhaps you even revitalized an old list, that's what you look for. You look for the specific results that you've had success with, and it can be your particular business, it can be work you've done for clients, it can even be work you've done for previous employers when you were a full-time employee. Whatever you have to do to go back and find the success that you've created with your copy, go back and do it. Now the third thing is, what are you comfortable doing? So maybe you're really good at writing sales letters, but you're not comfortable writing them. You don't like writing them, there's something about it. So answer this for yourself, what are you comfortable doing? Because that's going to form the seed of what you're going to offer later in this course. So find out what you're comfortable doing, but you're also good at and you can prove success in, and finally, what comes naturally to you? Do you naturally write better video sales letter scripts because you like video? Do you write sales letters because you enjoy writing letters to people? Do you like emails? Do you like advertorials because you like teaching before you sell something? What comes naturally to you as a copywriter? There's always going to be one or two things that you like doing more than other things. So I would stick with those, especially for phase one of this program. Now. Once you've done that, once you've answered those four questions in detail and you know what you're good at, what you're comfortable with, what you can prove success in, it's time to choose your niche. And this is going to be extremely important because the vast majority of copywriters, especially copywriters that are just starting out, try to be too broad and too general and it completely destroys their chances of earning a good income super quickly. The reason being, most copywriters aren't familiar with how to brand themselves immediately and charge high prices and you know have that confidence that is necessary for doing that right out of the gate. And if you know that's not the type of person you are, if you know that you need to prove things to yourself before you can claim them for others, just like most people do, then you have to choose your niche. Because choosing your niche is going to give you something to immediately cling to, and I'll show you why in a second. So first things first with choosing your niche, choose the lowest hanging fruit. When you went through those four questions in the beginning, you probably found out that if you have some results, they're in a specific industry. If you can say that, if you can say I've proven results in the personal development industry, or I have proven results in the weight loss industry, or the supplement industry, or the financial industry, all of those things 
become your lowest hanging fruit because you can already say, hey, here's what I've done so far and here's what I can continue to do because you've got momentum in that area. Starting from scratch in a new niche is harder than starting with the momentum you already have. The only reason I would tell you to not go with the lowest hanging fruit is if you absolutely hate the existing niche that you're in. So if you've written for financial but you hate writing and you want to go into personal development, by all means do that. Go into the thing you're passionate about. But think long and hard about what your goals are as a copywriter and if you can use the momentum from your lowest hanging fruit. Now once you've answered that for yourself, we're going to move on to some of the niches you can choose from. Now. Ideally, the niches you would choose are coming from the big three, the big three niches that direct response and direct mail and all of those industries are built off of. The first one is the financial and business niche. This is the newsletters like Agora and The Motley Fool. This is the stock traders. These are the financial advisors. Even And when you get into business, this is the internet marketing niche. This is the marketing in general, direct mail niche. Um, so many different business and financial niches are available for you as one of the primary niches to choose. The next one down would be relationships. Now, relationships can be anything from pickup, like how to get girls or how to get guys, or it can be all the way through to personal development or spiritual development. Relationships have a wide gambit, but the main goal is to improve yourself or improve the relationships you have with other people. So if you have experience in those niches, or even if you have personal experience, which is what a lot of people find they do in, in the relationship niche or in the personal development niche, then you can use that and, and make that your niche because you have that affinity towards it. The final one would be health and fitness. So health and fitness is extremely broad. You can sell physical products, you can sell supplements and weight loss info products and all sorts of stuff. But this niche is focused on physical health and physical fitness. If you have an affinity towards this one, choose that. But these big three account for billions and billions of dollars in annual revenue. And there are companies in every single one of them that are absolutely starving for good copywriters. And most of them love the fact that you as a copywriter will choose that niche to write for because every single one of them has their nuances that they like to think makes them completely unique. And when you can show them that you are a specific copywriter for their niche, they immediately put you above all the other copywriters that they have reached out to or that they're looking at hiring. So again, pick one from these big three if you can. Now, there are other options that aren't directly in those big three. One of them is the SaaS, the software as a service business model or the startup business model. These are the tech gurus, the Silicon Valleys of the world. Those kinds of people can't really put into the, one of the big three boxes. So the niche is still very large. Obviously, it's growing larger. You can find companies that have startup funding that, are, that can pay for your services. However, it's all about learning the language of these niches because the big three understand direct response marketing. They understand that copywriters do what copywriters do. The majority of the other options need to be coached. They need to be told what direct response is. So there's a little bit harder of a, of a gap to get over. So software as a service and startups are one of them. Business to business is another. If you are a copywriter who writes copy for one business who's selling their services or products to another business, your copy is going to look different than if you're selling to consumers. So business to business is a specific niche that you can go into and learn about if you don't like one of the big three. Now the next one would obviously be real estate. Real estate is a massive market. Not only do you have information publishers in real estate and how to do real estate, but you also have individual realtors and brokerages that need to sell homes every single day. And you have individual investors that are investing in real estate, a massive multi-billion dollar industry that you can join. The next one would be the coaching and consulting industry. So this is on the fringe of many of the big three and also on some of the ones you see above and other options. Coaching and consulting is essentially when an expert or an author or some sort of thought leader is trying to break into the business market 
by offering their own expertise, either in their consulting, in their coaching, in their books, their programs, something like that. But it's usually centered specifically on the expert themselves. So you as a copywriter can get really good at promoting an individual person rather than the product or service that is being portrayed. And that's going to carry you a long ways in the coaching and consulting niche. Most information publishers, if they're not part of the big four, fall under this category. So while the information publisher who's teaching your parrot how to talk might not fall under any of the big three, there's still niches that need copywriting, especially if you're going to sell information. So if you have a niche interest, whether or not it's, if it's surfing, if it's teaching your parrot to talk, if it's some obscure form of knitting, whatever it happens to be, if you have that interest, you can most likely find a niche with the publishers of that information. Now obviously, if it's too niche, you might not find enough people to sustain your career as a copywriter. But there's always expansion opportunities, so I would highly recommend that you go into something that you are passionate about and look to see if there are businesses that need your stuff. So. After all of those things, any business that can understand direct response marketing or results-based advertising is a contender for the type of niche that you can go into. All you have to do is make sure that they understand what direct response is, what copywriting does for their business, so you're not focused on convincing them that direct marketing works, and you're just, con you're just concentrating on getting them to sign the checks so that you can write the copy for them. All right, let's move on to constructing your first copy package. So far, you've answered questions about yourself and kind of lined out your skills and your passions. Now, you've also chosen a niche. That niche is going to be the place where you're going to live for the next 90 days, and if it works out really well, for the next foreseeable future because you'll be making too much money to really care about changing niches. So once you've answered those questions about yourself and once you've chosen your niche, let's construct your first copy package. So the best way to construct a copy package for yourself is to find a pre-built copy package via an info product. There are hundreds if not thousands of different information products that are teaching some sort of system or sales funnel or, or marketing plan for small businesses. And not just small businesses, but oftentimes you can find these products that are selling to your market, to the people that you want to write copy for. We call those the marketers to the marketers. And if you can find an information product that is marketing to your niche as a marketing product, you simply take that offer and offer to do it for people in that niche. For example, if you're in the internet marketing niche and you are a copywriter and you want to write for digital marketing businesses, one of the easiest things you could possibly do is buy Jeff Walker's product launch formula and then sell a pre-built copy package of your copywriting for someone who's also going through Jeff Walker's product launch formula. Because as you well know, as a buyer of those products, you can learn the system, but it's still a boatload of work for you as the buyer of the product to write the copy and get the messaging right. So as a professional copywriter, you can swoop in and save people from that because that's one of the main reasons people fail and don't use those products is the amount of work required to get the copy up. You swoop in, you charge them a modest fee in order to write their copy, and you immediately now have a client or five or 10 or however many you can handle. So here's what you can look at for different types of pre-built copy packages. The first one is an opt-in funnel. So if you're doing an opt-in funnel for a business, regardless of whatever your niche is, you're gonna focus on writing copy for the ads, the landing page that the traffic is going to, the thank you page, and the autoresponders that go out from that thank you page, and obviously the sales page for products if those are applicable. That is a pre-built copywriting package. That is an easy decision for someone to say yes to regardless of whatever the price is. Now, if you're just starting out, I would encourage you to price these modestly, but modestly is still in the thousands of dollars. An opt-in funnel properly executed by a professional copywriter is worth $1,000 to $3,000 to maybe even $7,000 to the right buyer. Because when you think about it, if the buyer 
purchases a copywriting package and gets the opt-in funnel for their business, then all of a sudden they have converting ads, a converting landing page, a converting autoresponder series, and possibly converting sales pages for their products, which means it is exponentially more valuable for the business owner to buy that product package, that copy package, than it would be for them to go out and find multiple copywriters, not really knowing what they're building, and obviously have to deal with the pain of dealing with multiple freelancers. So the other options you've got here are pretty self-explanatory. The lead capture funnel. You can build in the ads, the lead magnet that you have to write, the follow-up campaigns, whether it be through direct mail, email, phone scripts, or applications. All of those things come as a pre-built copy package that you can market. And you're starting to see the theme here. Most copywriters go out and market themselves by saying, hey, I, I write direct response copy, you should hire me. But instead, what you're gonna be doing is choosing a specific niche in the area that you're comfortable with in writing copy and then pre-building a copywriting package that a business owner can simply say yes or no to. That cuts down the time on your end trying to negotiate back and forth with clients and that cuts down the time on their end because they're not looking for a freelancer and they don't wanna have 10 conversations with copywriters that go nowhere. They just want their stuff done and you're doing it for them. So other options, sales funnel, Sales funnels are obvious, webinar funnels are obvious, the list goes on, and the easiest way to do that is to either create this package for, your, for yourself because you have the knowledge in internet marketing to do so, or go find an information product that is being marketed to the marketers or by the marketers in your niche and just copying that and offering the copy for sale. That is the easiest way to get immediate clients. So. Here's how you price it, because this is the next question I always get. Okay, great, copy packages. How do you price them? So here's how you do it, especially in phase one where you're getting your first clients or two. Offer the price as a no-brainer that doesn't invoke fear of shitty work. The reason for that is because there is a special in-between pricing zone where if you charge too little, people will not take you seriously as a writer because they feel that you are a bad writer, you're a new writer, whatever it happens to be. You don't wanna give off that vibe. Now, there is an upper spectrum as well where you have to start justifying the pricing that you're offering based on real success, real marquee clients, big stuff like that, or otherwise you're gonna seem like a poser. So in between is what we're talking about here, and in between is where you start as a phase one copywriter. If you don't start here, then you're either gonna be forever fighting for those scraps of small jobs that people post, or you're never gonna have that sort of easy branding of high ticket results that you can build your high ticket practice off of. Now, so let's look at pricing. For an opt-in funnels and lead capture funnels, a good price for a phase one copywriter is between $500 and $2,500 for an opt-in funnel or a lead capture funnel. Now, what we just talked about previously, that would be ads, landing page, and thank you page with autoresponders, or ads, lead magnet, landing page, thank you page, and follow-up campaign. That is the package that you're charging, and this is the price that you should charge for it. For a sales funnel, especially with a sales page added, $2,500 to $5,000 is an extremely fair price for a fair as one copywriter to write that type of funnel in its totality. Webinar funnels can be $1,500 to $6,000 if you're writing the webinar script on the high end. If you're not writing the webinar script, the lower price is because they're relatively simple funnels where it requires a couple emails like we have here and a registration page and that's about it. But if they want you to write the script, then you tack on a huge amount because the script is the majority of the sales piece. So that's what we're doing. Now, like I said, one of the hacks you can, you can offer is offering that pre-built package based off of a known guru's methods. And for internet marketing, that's in Jeff Walker, Russell Brunson. But you can offer the package that you're writing the copy for at the same price as the product they just bought. So if Jack Walker's PLF course is $2,000, then charge them $2,000 to write that package. They've already proven that they're willing to spend that much money to learn the system. So it's really easy for you as a copywriter to come in and charge the exact same price to write the copy. Now keep in mind, all of these things that I just talked about, these are beginner prices. These are beginner prices because 
you should not stay at this level. This is not a sustainable level for a freelance writer, especially if you want to grow to the middle six figures per year. You can't write webinar funnels for $1,500 a pop and make a really solid six figures per year unless you decide to kill yourself with the workload. So these are beginner prices. This is just for your first client, maybe for your first couple clients, but you do not stay here. So next thing you do during phase one is create a professional Facebook page for yourself. And here's how you do it. Create the page for yourself and put a little bit of branding in there for yourself on what you want people to perceive you as. Then your name is going to be your name, the core package copywriter, for the niche market. So you define yourself, your name first, and then you give your core package as, as that type of copywriter, and then you choose the niche that you're in. For example, Patrick Stewart, the sales funnel copywriter for the enterprise market. That's it. That's all you have to do. And by doing this, it puts you ahead of 98% of other copywriters because most other copywriters do not have this level of distinction in their marketing. They simply call themselves a copywriter and maybe they'll call themselves a copywriter that has worked with specific industries, but they're never branding themselves like this. And this means that you and only you are gonna be top of mind for the market that you're operating in. Another example would be OJ Simpson, the pitch deck copywriter for the ill-fitting glove market. Now these are just examples. Build your own, see what feels good, and if you need to go with something like the fitness market, then make sure that you're offering a really specific core package. If you're going with something more niche, then you can give a more broad understanding. So let's say if you're going for a super niche market like knitting information products, then you can say the copywriter for the knitting market because it's a niche enough market that you don't have to say sales funnel or opt-in funnel. You can just say copywriter because that niche is so small. It's up to you to make the judgment call on where your niche is and what your core package is, but this is the template for doing it. Here's how to find your first few clients without spending any money on advertising and without wasting a bunch of time going to networking events and all that madness. First place is to go to the Cult of Copy job board. If you're not already a member of it, I would highly recommend signing up for it just by searching in the, in the Facebook search bar and joining it. You will have to wait for approval. Most people get approved unless you have a brand new Facebook account and you look sketchy. So go there. It is a direct posting place where both people post about jobs and people post about being hired. So I would recommend going to the Cult of Copy job board and then making a very specific offer based on what you've chosen your niche and your core package to be. The other options are obviously Upwork, Fiverr, Freelancer, and several other sites like that where you can aggregate the offers that are being made for freelancers like yourself, but you can also brand yourself as the type of copywriter that you were told to, that you were told to create and then only apply for the jobs that are specific to your niche. This is gonna help you find your first client or your first couple clients. And here's what you do once you've done that. Once you've found those clients, make sure you undercharge what they think they should be, what they be, should be paying within reason of those prices we talked about. And on top of that, you wanna over deliver. Not only do you wanna over deliver on what you create for them, you wanna deliver early and you wanna be over communicative. So if you think it's gonna take you a week to write your sales letter, tell them it's gonna take you three weeks and then deliver it on week one. And then help them reiterate or optimize it if you want to. Undercharge, over deliver, and here's why. You want a testimonial. That's why you're doing this. It's good to get paid because when you get paid, they're more serious about it so you don't offer your work for free. People who get free work are usually very less, less scrupulous than the people who pay for work, even if they're not paying too much for that work. Your main goal in phase one is to get testimonials. Now, you want to get a testimonial from them, ideally in video, where they're showing their face. Because testimonials, let's just face it, they can be faked really, really easily these days. But a genuine testimonial from an actual client over the video over a video is extremely difficult 
to fake. So that's what you're gonna try to do. If they won't give it to you in video, that's fine, but ideally you wanna push them to do a video testimonial. Then, then you're gonna write a testimonial questionnaire for them. I'm not gonna give you a template because there's plenty of them on the internet and I don't wanna waste your time with it. Just type in testimonial questionnaire or testimonial template and you'll see hundreds of options. Just pick the best one for you. Then you wanna interview that client via video and record that interview with you asking those questions for that testimonial. Then obviously during that interview, you say, may I, use, may I use this interview as a testimonial and receive their permission to use it. This is very critical legally. They have to give you permission to use, the, use that content as a testimonial. Then once you've done that, you can either edit it so that it's just their face or just their answers, or just use that video interview completely and use it ruthlessly to get more clients. By being a copywriter who has an actual client giving them a video testimonial that you can then promote to your audience, to your target market, that puts you head and shoulders above every single other copywriter out there. I bet you can't count any time where you've seen a copywriter put a questionnaire video up and then drive traffic to an offer because of it for their services. You can't name a time that you've seen it because it never happens because copywriters are really crappy at marketing themselves. Now here's what you do. After you film the testimonial, you wanna ask for a referral to five of their peers that also need copy at the same price point. It's the same offer, the same price point, and you're asking for a referral to five of those clients' peers. Now, if they say no, then ask for a public shout out from them on social media. Keep in mind, this is after filming the testimonial. So you already have a testimonial, but now you're asking for a public shout out from them on social media. That is going to get the people who they are connected with on social media to pay attention and to potentially reach out to you in order to work with you. And this would be, this would be an easier thing for them to do than give you a referral for five peers. Now, if they say yes and they want you, they want to give you referrals, then it's your job to follow up with those people that they give you immediately, ideally in an, either an email or a Facebook message that is CC'd with the client you just worked with. You want to keep that mutual connection alive as long as possible until you steer the conversation to actually buying your next product. This by itself can get you your first five, six, even 10 clients just from doing this. And I guarantee that if you complete phase one in order and you do all of it, you will be head and shoulders above every single copywriter that you would ever compete with. I guarantee it. And that is just phase one. Now, phase one should take one to three weeks. Ideally, your copy package is smaller and it's easier to test quickly. Therefore, you're getting the results faster for your first few clients. Speed is key in phase one. So if you need to offer a smaller package in order to get it tested quicker, that is better than offering a bigger package and potentially getting a bigger result. Because in phase one, it's all about speed and following the steps that I just outlined for you. So like I said, email campaigns, ad campaigns, advertorials, short videos, things like that, those are the best things that you can test in a short period of time. Let's talk about phase two. Now phase one, if you go through all of the steps, it's gonna get you more clients more consistently and put you head and shoulders above your competition more so than any other copywriter I've ever seen. And phase two is how you completely blow the rest of them out of the water. Here's how to get consistent work. Now, like I said, repeat phase one, steps five through eight, until you have five testimonials, ideally in the same niche with results from your work. All right, so that's our starting point for phase two. Five testimonials, ideally in the same niche with tangible results from your work. So they can't just be fluffy testimonials that say, working with so-and-so was really great, thanks so much, have a great day. Get the results. If you don't have five testimonials and at least have some results along with them, keep working in phase one until you get actual results from your work and get them to talk about the actual results from your work. So that's the beginning of phase one. By now, you should have 10 to, five, or 10 to 15 conversations and potential clients, 
and you should have made three thousand to seven and a half thousand dollars or more as well so this is our starting point for phase two five testimonials results some income three thousand to seven thousand or more and multiple more conversations that are currently happening now here's how to create a paid traffic funnel using your earnings from your previous clients and doing it in a way that doesn't overwhelm you or get super complicated because you're a freelancer and you're required to fulfill on the things you sell. Here's how we do it. There are different types of ads that you can do as a freelancer that are more effective than the type of ads you see being peddled on a bunch of courses nowadays. The first one is a testimonial plus a call to action that says click to see the case study. Now the testimonial is what you filmed you can either put the whole thing up there or you can just put a small snippet and that's the thing that draws them in and makes them click and put in their email to see this case study on the results that you have. Now you can try multiple testimonials to see if you can get different types of people from your target market, but uh, this one is going to be extremely effective for you because it does two things. Not only does it provide the social proof for you and your services as a freelancer, but it only attracts the interested people who want your services right away and not just the people who are interested in seeing the testimonial. Now the next thing you can do is just do a case study up front and a case study on one of your clients and the results that you got for them without the testimonial. That's totally fine. If you didn't manage to get a testimonial from one of your first initial clients, like you should have, then you can just do a case study and you can even anonymize the content of that case study and still talk about the results that you got. Notice how every single one of those options are based on results. As a freelancer, results sell. In phase one, you are using the specificity of your offer in order to sell things, but in phase two, especially with cold traffic, results sell, and results are really the only thing that sells. And testimonials are a form of result. Now, there's a couple other ads that you can run. Something to the effect of 10 tips, or seven tips, or five cool hacks, or whatever. Those types of articles get read, those types of videos get watched, and all you have to do is make sure that you are targeting your ideal client with those tips. So if you are targeting fitness business owners as a copywriter, you don't want to write 10 tips on 10 tips on how to get abs because that's not something that the fitness owner is going to be interested in. You're going to say something like 10 tips on how to grow your fitness business or 10, 10 reasons why your sales letter isn't converting or seven hacks to get more social media followers, something like that for your fitness clients, whatever it happens to be. The next option is the anatomy of. Now this is very similar to a case study, but you can use anything to discuss this. The anatomy of a fitness webinar that attracts five new clients per week. The anatomy of a sales letter that draws in seven new leads per day. The anatomy of a Facebook ad that gets a 50% click-through rate or something like that. Again, talking about results, but talking about a specific piece that you've done or that you've studied in your niche and can offer them as a piece of value. The final one would be do not blank until you watch this, which is something that your ideal client is actively trying to do. So if they're trying to write a sales letter or do a webinar or do Facebook ads or something like that, you say, do not run Facebook ads for your fitness business until you watch this. Do not run a webinar to get clients in your fitness business until you watch this. Do not try to write a sales letter until you watch this. That is what you wanna focus on. All the better if you can insert your core package into that offer. So do not launch your product until you watch this. Do not write your sales funnel copy until you watch this. That's the type of ad that you're gonna use. All of those work, you just have to figure out what works best for you and test multiple options. And that's why we had you earn some money before you did this because like anything else, paid traffic takes time, it takes energy, and it takes money. But that's why we're doing this and these are the most effective ways to start so you're not running around in the dark. Now. Let's talk about the landing page that that ad is gonna to go to. Every single one of those ads are gonna to go to this type of video. It's called the Hardway VSL. Now the Hardway VSL 
is unique to freelancers and service providers because we have an unfair advantage as freelancers and service providers because we're performing the service that we're selling, which means we're just selling our ability to do the service for a client and we're not selling the information about that service or a product about that service. And the reason that's an unfair advantage is because we don't have to hold anything back. We don't have to hide things or use secrets or say that the rest is in the course. You get to lay it all out there. And it's actually more advantageous for you as a freelancer because by laying everything out in detail, you can use that overwhelm factor to say, look, if this seems overwhelming to you, and this is what we're doing with this BSL, if this seems overwhelming to you, then I will simply do it for you. Contact me here. My rates are competitive. That's it. So here's how to do it. You teach the exact process of how to write and launch your core package. So if your core package is a sales funnel for fitness professionals, then you need to show every detail, exactly how many emails, how many videos, what the market research entails, the ad testing that's required, the iterations of copy to make sure that everything is optimized, the different funnel options that they can choose, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You wanna show every single detail because your goal here is not to convince them to buy a product about your system, it's about hiring you to write the darn thing. So they wanna know that you know what you're talking about and they wanna know exactly what they're gonna get and then they're gonna hire you. And if they take your information and run off and do it themselves, that is awesome because now you have a raving fan and you've helped someone make a lot of money and next time they might just come back to you and go, hey, that took me a really long time, that was really hard, why don't you write it for me? You don't have to worry about people stealing your IP because you're the one writing the copy and you're the service provider. So here's an example. For a product launch formula funnel, you would need three to five PLC videos, each of which are 15 to 25 minutes long and they have very specific outcomes that are needed for each one, like the first one is the opportunity and so on. So then you can outline that and say, look, 15 minutes of video is like 15 pages of text each. So you're going to have to write about 100 pages worth of text just for these videos. And then you're going to need 50 ads. And then you're going to need 30 emails of about 500 to 1,000 words. You're going to need webinar scripts. You're going to need landing page copy. You're going to need sales page copy, sales video copy, all this stuff. And you outline that in your VSL and simply say, look, this is what is required to launch this successfully. If you want to do this with me and have me write your copy for you, contact me here. And that is the entire VSL. You don't need a template. You don't need some sort of persuasive stuff. You're just teaching and then you are offering to do the service for them. So like I said, offer the way out, which is to hire you. Then they go through an application process. And let's talk about the application process real quick. So the application process is designed to capture your ideal client's profile. Now you're gonna to wanna to know about their business revenue, how much they made in the last year and how much they make every single month. How old is their business and how successful are they both with selling their products and how successful are their customers? What's their budget for copy? If they have no budget for copywriting, then they can't reach out to you and pay you for copy. Now, never trust the budget number. Always assume that they have a higher budget for copy if the value is there. But if they have a budget in the first place, that's a good sign. That means they know they're going to have to invest in copy. If they say zero, then that's a red flag. Next thing is the timeline for the project. Is this a super quick project or is this a down the line project that you can wait on or that they can wait on? And the next thing you wanna do in this, in this questionnaire and application process is weed out any problem clients. So if they have mentioned that they deal with copywriters before and that their copywriters disappear or that their freelancers disappear or that the copy is never converted or their product is brand new but they know it's gonna be great because their mom told it would be great, that's the problem clients that you wanna weed out in this process. Because if you're driving paid traffic, you're not paying for 100 leads, you're paying for five amazing leads that you can work with. That's it. So don't worry about weeding out 90% of the people who apply because you're not gonna to wanna to work with them anyway. You wanna work with the biggest and baddest clients that reach out to you. So once you've done that, schedule the sales call. Now, 
in previous uh, in previous videos, I have told you about the eleven authority questions that you can ask and the C three P four concept of doing a sales call. So once you've once you've understood that and you've scheduled the sales call, then you just go through that process and make sure that they understand the full value of the copy that you're providing. Now, because you're in phase two and you're not trying to expand your fees as much as possible at this point, then if they are a fit on the sales call, and if you know they're a fit based on their application and based on what you just talked about, then tell them the price of the package on the sales call. If they say no, move on to the next one or, or start taking things off of the package. So instead of offering them the entire sales funnel package, maybe just write the sales page for them and cut off all the emails and mark them off and say, okay, fine, then this, pri this price. Now here's a tip. Every single time you have a client for a specific package, increase the price for the next client. Now, assuming that it's not the same client coming back for another job, in which case you don't want to increase the price on your client unless they're really, really low and you really have to increase the price. There's, there's ways to do that in a professional way. But if you're dealing with different clients every single time, raise the price until, one of, until you're getting a ton of no's and then you know that you're at a sweet spot where you can start focusing on some of the phase three stuff. So that's my tip for this. Schedule the sales call, get these authority questions answered, and then tell them the price of the package on the sales call. So once you're done with that, send the invoice, get paid any way you can, as quickly as you can, and here's how you systematize the delivery of your product. So create a personal process for getting the work done. This is incredibly important, and most copywriters don't do this. They just kind of wing it every single time. Create a personal process of every single step of your copywriting experience. The research, the headline writing, the outlines, the conversations, the back and forth, the editing, whatever you gotta do, create your process for getting it done because just having that process is going to speed things up. Now, once you have it, tweak it until it gets optimized because there's plenty of time in there that I know you're just messing around or not using your time effectively. So once you've got your personal process down, tweak it until it's optimized. And then once it's optimized, you need to outsource the non-critical components. The reason you want to optimize first is because you don't want to outsource stuff that doesn't matter that you're just going to take out. So create your process, tweak the process until it's optimized, and then outsource the non-critical components of that process. Here's what I would consider to be things you should not outsource. The first one is research and review. So I personally believe that as a copywriter, you must do your own research because it helps you get a feel for the market as a whole. If you're not doing your own research, you're doing yourself and your client a disservice because you don't see everything that the market has to tell you. I think research is incredibly important to the process and it's going to help get your creative juices flowing as well. Then I would also say do not outsource the client interview or the recordings of those interviews or you know some conversations you have with client with prospects or customers of your client people like that do that yourself for the same reason that you should do the research yourself you need to hear those stories you need to be the one asking those questions in real time you can't let someone else do it also i would recommend you do not outsource writing the lead the lead is the single most important part of a copy regardless of what you're writing and so it requires the most attention and the most focus on the research that you just did. Do not outsource these three things. Now, you can outsource some of this stuff and anything else that you find that isn't one of those previous three things. One of them is aggregating raw research data. So yes, do your own research, but you do not have to sift through every single uh, scholarly journal or blog article or anything like that and, and sift through, you can teach someone how to find the relevant research and then send it all to you so that you can paw through it. That's one of the best ways to cut the work time down on your projects and systematize your process. You can also outsource the writing of the offer stack. The offer stack is going to look very, very similar in every piece of copy you write because that's, once you're, that's when you're done persuading and you start selling. And that selling process is very clinical. So as long as you're following a specific template, one of your you know, favorite templates, one of your favorite offer stacks, that can be outsourced to someone else.
because you don't have to be present for that. It's all the same stuff. Same thing with the core of the copy. So the core of the copy is going to be the technical stuff, the templatized stuff. So this is where you know you you present the credentials of your client. You deal with urgency and scarcity and the close and all that kind of stuff. So the stuff that doesn't require a lot of creative energy is the stuff you can outsource in terms of writing tasks. Your job should be focused on the research, the big idea, and the lead, and then obviously overall a review of the copy to make sure it all flows together. That is one of the best ways to outsource your tasks. Now, you have a process for starting as a copywriter and getting your first few clients and testimonials in a niche that you love using the skills that you're very comfortable with. Then, once you've done the first phase, you have an exact process on how to create a consistent flow of clients into your practice. That alone is going to make you a six-figure copywriter. Bar none, full stop. You could even charge lower prices than what I would recommend you charging once you've finished phase three and still make six figures per year. Remember, six figures per year is only $8,333 per month. If you're selling a sales funnel package, you need to write two of those per month. And if your system is processed, it is, is optimized, you could write two of those per month very easily. So keep that in mind as we're growing through phase three, because phase three is where things get really, really exciting. So building a compelling personal brand is phase three. Now, Using your knowledge of your ideal client avatar, you need to establish where their attention is on a daily basis. So wherever your clients hang out, these are the people who are the publishers, the marketers, those types of people. Where do they hang out and where is their attention? If it's on social media, there's different types of social medias for different types of people. These are obviously just examples and they're not conclusive or they're not comprehensive, but just to get your mind working, Facebook tends to be uh, very, very prevalent with, for online entrepreneurs like digital marketers, people like them. Network marketers are very big on Facebook and opportunity seeking audiences. The opportunity seekers are on Facebook because they're distracted from their normal lives, which they don't like. So that is a really good place for those types of markets. Again, not comprehensive, but uh, some of the bigger ones. Next one is Twitter. Twitter actually has a ton of different niches in it that people use for communication or for finding blog articles and things like that. But corporate types, artists and creatives, uh, tech and programmers, influencers, and even certain experts and thought leaders all spend time on Twitter pretty aggressively because they've built a following there, they can communicate with their followers very easily, it's just a very natural platform for that. Now LinkedIn is obvious, it's for corporates, it's for salespeople, headhunters, professional services, so financial advisors and lawyers and accountants, people like that, and B2B focused creatives. So if you're marketing to graphic designers or web designers, they're gonna be on LinkedIn because they wanna get actual business clients. Reddit.com is an underutilized resource for a ton of different niches, but also very millennial and very tech savvy in nature. It's kind of difficult to market on Reddit, but if you figure out the code and the language of it, um, it becomes a very lucrative place to be. And YouTube, again, is an enormous repository, but there's a lot of gamers, young adults, consumer products, entertainers, and music on YouTube. So where is your ideal client avatar and where is their attention on a daily basis? Pick one of the social media platforms that your ideal client is on. Now, here's some examples of where your ideal client would be reading in print media. So magazines, and magazines will tell you what their demographics are, so it's really not that difficult. Just go to magazines.com and download their, um, their advertising packages. It'll tell you exactly how many people read them and who reads them. So that's one option. Newspapers, if it's a national newspaper, you can assume that it's a business savvy and educated audience. However, they might not be familiar with direct response. If it's a local newspaper, you've got local entrepreneurs, real estate, locally entrenched people, people who are active in the community read local newspapers. Trade journals. This is industry specific and it just depends on if you're going after that niche in general. 
Mail order newsletters is very company specific. However, if you can get into them as a contributor or as a potential joint venture or affiliate, then it's going to be a very lucrative concept because they're very rabid readers of these mail order newsletters. Mass media, here's some mass media options for you. TV, which is channel specific. Obviously the History Channel is gonna look different than Home and Garden TV, but if you can get onto a specific channel for your ideal client avatar, then you're gonna explode. The news is network and time slot specific, but again, local news or national news, by appearing on the news, you have enormous authority and branding. Radio is very similar. It's locally specific, unless you're on satellite radio, but at the same time, if you got on a local network on radio, you would be heard by almost every single person in your ideal client avatar. And direct mail is highly niche. If you're gonna communicate with them via direct mail, be prepared to spend money, but it's also extremely lucrative. So find a social network or platform that you can afford that allows native publishing of media. So I would choose between the big five, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, or Reddit, or Pinterest if you have some sort of interest in Pinterest or your, or your ideal clients are on Pinterest uh, but I would highly recommend the first five, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Reddit. Now, once you've chosen that platform, begin interacting and publishing content daily on that platform. And yes, daily is key because daily content allows you to achieve what is called TOMA, top of mind awareness. And when you have top of mind awareness in front of your ideal client avatar, you will never lack for work again. And on top of that, you will be able to claim a sort of mini celebrity status, which allows you to increase your prices commensurately with the value and status that you have. Beginner interacting and publishing content daily on that platform. Now, here's how I would do that. Here's some specific advice on how to do daily content. Create a content schedule and stick to it. Here's how you do that. Use headline generators to brainstorm content. There are many different headline generators on the internet. You can go to them and they're mainly for content just like this. I wouldn't use them for copywriting, but they're good for content. Create 200 plus headlines. Once you've got those headlines that are based on your ideal client avatar, their pains, their problems, your experience, your case studies, all those kinds of things, once you've got those 200 headlines or more, outline the first 50 headlines in terms of content. So you got a headline, you write a couple lines on what you're gonna talk about. Headline, write a couple lines on what you're gonna talk about. Then once you've gotten your first 50 done, set a calendar reminder for the next uh, to do the next 50 in 30 days and so on. That way you're always ahead on your content. You can just pick up either a note card or your notes or a, a Evernote doc, whatever you use, and say, oh, okay, I'm gonna use this piece of content today. Now practice your first few before going live or recording stuff or, or writing things down, but it will get easier over time. So practice first, but understand that daily content is more of a, a volume thing rather than a quality thing. Remember, top of mind awareness. No one's gonna remember what your video said two weeks ago if you're publishing daily content. So remember that, it's all about getting it out there. Now, I would recommend you shoot for shorter pieces of content, which is like three to five minutes if it's a video or three to five minute read if it's a, uh, a readable thing. That would be best until your audience tells you they want more or longer type sessions. That's how I would create your content schedule. Now, once you've created your content schedule and you've stuck to it for a while, here's some ways to amplify that. If you interact with influencers and you provide value that is visible to their audience, you become elevated to the level of that influencer in that audience. So you can go into their groups, you can answer questions that people are asking, you can add value via posts in their groups. This is more for Facebook, obviously, but LinkedIn also applies here as well, and Reddit applies here as well. Um, YouTube, not so much, but and Twitter, not so much, simply because they're more one-to-many type platforms but you can go in and still help those influencers by joint venturing with content or something like that. So uh, add value via posts, interact with people, help stuff out, help people out. Zero pitch, like absolutely zero pitch. Let your social media profile and your personal content 
that you're posting on your profile do the pitching. That's If someone's interested in you, they're going to click on your profile, they're going to go see you, they're going to look at your social media, and they'll see, start seeing your content. You don't have to put a call to action or a pitch anywhere because the interested people are going to self-select and go find you. The next thing is once a relationship is established, offer pure content for their audience, but like co-branded, either a webinar or a live stream or something like that. Now, that assumes that a relationship is, is established, but it's also very easy to do because these people want extra content and better content too. They're competing with everyone else who publishes content. So the better content they can put out, the better for their audience. And you can give that to them through your expertise. So if you're open to it, here's another like hack that if you have enough time or you have enough inclination to do this, if you're open to it, create a product exclusively for that influencer and give them 100% of the commissions as you co-promote it. So you're not doing this for income. Remember, this entire concept around phase three is not focused on immediate income, especially from products. This is for PR and clout because you're using your clout in the industry to not only increase your value as a freelancer, but increase your prices because now you're becoming a mini celebrity in your niche. And instead of charging $5,000 for a sales funnel, you can charge 10,000 or 15,000 or 50,000, whatever it happens to be, because your value starts going up intrinsically. That's what we're doing this for. Now, once you've created your content and you've started to got into a flow of it, start syndicating it throughout the other platforms that your ideal client avatar spends their time on. So if your ideal client avatar is primarily on Facebook, but you know that they occasionally go to YouTube or Twitter or LinkedIn, then you can start syndicating the content you've created into other pieces of content, even on your own website if you want to create a website. What you'll notice here throughout this entire process is that you do not need a website at any point during this process. If you want one, sure, that's fine, but it's unnecessary. You can get to six figures and beyond as a copywriter without ever having a website. I know because I've done it and I've helped people do it. So with your syndicated content, you can either turn your live streams into recorded videos, you can pull podcasts out, audio snippets, blog posts, tweets, whatever you gotta do with that content that's already been created. Do not reinvent the wheel over and over and over again. Reuse your stuff because it's valuable. That's why you're doing it. So if you've done a ton of stuff, you can even create products. And a couple live streams of 15 minutes long each will very easily turn into a 45 page book if you wanna create one or even longer depending on how much content you've done. So here's the key though. Remember to mimic the native content as much as possible. So if you're doing a live stream on Facebook, then potentially that can transfer to a good recorded YouTube video, but it's probably not gonna transfer as well to some sort of tweet or series of tweets. It's not gonna transfer as well to a LinkedIn post. So make sure that even though you've got the content, you spend the time molding it so that it mimics the native content as much as possible. That's, I see a lot of people try to syndicate and just push stuff out as quickly as they can, but it's all about mimicking the native content because otherwise people aren't going to read it or care about it. So the next step is to take the opportunities to be more public when the audience has your ideal client avatar in it. We're doing all of this for your ideal client avatar. Remember that. Now, if you get speaking engagements, which are paid or free, I would highly recommend you take them for your ideal client avatar. Webinar offers, podcasts, articles and editorials in certain newspapers or magazines or online publishing companies. All of the book deals, all of these things will come to you as you grow in popularity and clout. And I would recommend taking them if they have your ideal client avatar in the audience that they're appealing to. If they do not, then I would not take them because it's a waste of your time. So here's my next step. Invest in some branding. And this is when you invest in yourself. So your social media is designed to accentuate the type of image that you want to portray. That's all it's about. That's what everybody is doing. Now, don't be inauthentic. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't post pictures of stacks of cash if you don't actually have stacks of cash in your in your house, which would be stupid. But 
be authentic, but be the best version of yourself on social media because that's what people want to connect with. They don't want to, they want to connect with someone who is real, but they also don't want to connect with someone who's like in worse crap or living more boring than they are. They want celebrities. They want people to look up to and aspire to be. So invest in some of that. If it's graphic design for your images or for your posts or for your PDFs or anything like that, do that. If it's for your social media profiles, do that. Maybe have a conversation with someone who's an expert in personal branding because they will help you create a persona around yourself that is true to yourself and authentic, but not so uh, boring as to be a normal person, like someone who nobody wants to follow. That's uh, something to consider. Also, talk to a stylist if you have to. If you don't have the particular style that you want to portray, talk to someone who knows what they're doing because that's going to give you the information you need to build that personal brand bigger and better. So after your client work and after getting new clients, obviously, and getting paid, this is your priority. You can't do enough of this. And as long as your other obligations are met and your finances are stable, you should continue to do this until you feel like you need to stop and you don't wanna work anymore because all of this feeds off of itself. Phase one, you are a raw newbie copywriter who's just trying to get their first few clients and get testimonials. By the time you're done with phase one, you've done more for yourself than most copywriters will ever do. At the start of phase two to the end of phase two, you create something that 99.9% .9 of copywriters do not have, which is a consistent lead generation funnel or system. Once you've got that, you can write your own ticket. You can work with as many clients or as few clients as you want. And the only thing that's going to help you increase your prices faster is by doing this phase three personal branding stuff because it's going to give you something to do when you're not working on client things to grow your business and be really specific. But it's also going to allow you to charge more for the leads that you're bringing in. I'm sorry, from the leads that you're bringing in. So everything feeds off of itself. You can't get to phase two if you don't have testimonials and results from phase one. You can't get to phase three if you're not financially stable because financial stability will ruin your ability to do all this free stuff for people. You're always going to be trying to pitch or you know be needy or whatever. So get your financial stuff straight out first with the phase two and then in phase three build your stuff out. That's the plan, guys. It's really simple. You can do it incredibly quickly if you focus on speed and follow the exact steps in this video. Thank you for your attention today. That was the 90-day professional copywriter playbook, and I appreciate your time and attention. If you do this and you achieve results, then please email me or private message me on Facebook and let me know because I would love to hear your success story. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Have a wonderful day.